These little trimellos have a story to tell about how to make rabbits, guinea pigs, chinchillas and degus happy. They contain more than 42 plants from untreated natural meadows plus nutrients and vitamins for a perfectly balanced mix. We put nature in a new form, a huge variety in a single trimello. Rich in raw fibers and with a balanced composition, our trimellos can be fed with no worry or whey. Just fill up the bowl and let them eat it all up. The shape is perfectly tailored to the natural chewing and eating behavior. A huge, no worries package full of plants, nutrients and vitamins combined in a single trimello. Trimello, the original. No worries, balanced feeding with Bunny. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ken Maeda. I am a director of the Department of Veterinary Science, National Institute of Infectious Diseases, Japan. Before my presentation, I would like to appreciate this organizer for a nice talking opportunity. Okay, now I would like to start my presentation. Today's topic is current situation of tick bomb diseases in Japan. This slide shows the major tick bomb diseases in Japan. The most cases were reported for scrub tiffs. This is caused by oriental tsutsugamushi. Second is the Japanese spotted fever. This is caused by Rikechu Japonica. And the third is a severe fever with thrombocyte venous syndrome. We say SFTS. SFTS is a virus. In Japan, around 100 cases per year were reported. And then fourth is the Lyme disease. And the fifth is the relapsing fever. Recently, tick-borne encephalitis were reported in Hokkaido. This slide shows the weekly cases of tick-borne infectious diseases in Japan from 2013 to 17. Scrap tiffs were reported mainly in summertime and then winter time. Japanese spotted fever was reported from spring to autumn. SFTS was reported mainly in spring and summer. Lyme disease is reported in summer and tick-borne encephalitis is not so many but reported in summer times. So, depend on diseases, uh, the reported season were different because uh, different tick species transmitted the diseases. So, vector tick was active, active and then disease was spreading. This slide shows the distribution of tick-borne infectious diseases in Japan from 2013 to 17. Scrub was reported all, of, all over Japan. And Japanese spotted fever and SFTS were mainly reported in west, eastern part, western part of Japan. 
and Lyme disease and TBE was reported in northern part of Japan and the mountainous region. So distribution is also depend on the diseases because the vector tick were uh, distribution distribution of vector tick is different. From this slide, I would like to present severe fever with thrombocytopenia syndrome (SFTS) virus. This virus belongs to order Bunyavirales family Phenibiridae genus Bandvirus. Viral particle diameter is around 100 nanometer. This is a cartoon of viral particle. Inside the viral, three segmented negative strand RNA were contained. Each segment called L, uh, L protein, glycoprotein, and N protein, and NSS. NSS were reported to inhibit interferon activity. I discovered first SFTS cases in Japan, 2012. The patient is female and her age is 50s. She has never been to foreign country. Disease on onset is autumn 2012. The location is Yamaguchi Prefecture. I worked in Yamaguchi Prefecture as a professor in Yamaguchi University. And her symptom is fever. Her symptoms are fever, general fatigue, vomiting, and melanoma. Laboratory findings are leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. AST, ALT, LDH, and CK elevated. Perching in serum ele extremely elevated. Hematuria and protein urea were observed in urina urinalysis. Hemophagocytosis with hypocellularity findings in bone marrow aspiration. This photo shows of hemophagocytosis. This slide shows my isolated virus. This is a typical Bunya virus. The diameter is around 100 nanometer. From envelope, glycoprotein was expressed. SFTSV was first reported from China. So in China, many cases were reported. This slide shows the number of SFTS cases and the fatality ratio from 2010 to 2019 in China. The SFTS cases were increased and then after 2015, the level is a plateau. And the gray line is, shows the fatal, fatality ratio. So fatality ratio is decreased and now is the fatality is around 6%. This slide shows the regional distribution of SFTS cases in mainland China. In 2010, only seven provinces SFTS were reported only from seven provinces and gradually expanding the region. 
And then finally, in 2019, almost province were positive for SFTS. However, the major SFT cases were reported in central east to central part of China. This slide shows the monthly number of SFTS cases in mainland China. So in the spring, from spring to autumn, the major major SFT cases were reported. And in, win in winter time, SFTS cases were not so many reported in China. This slide shows population distribution of SFTS cases. So SFTS case increase after 40s. And then fatality ratio is also increasing from uh, 35 and then gradually increasing. So over 80s, Fatality ratio is around 10%. So, old person is is a high risk group. This slide shows SFTS B RNA detection in ticks. Many ticks were positive for SFTS. However, hemophysitis lung colonies and hemophysitis flower are major vector for SFTS in China. However, the other tick species also infected with SFTS. This is situation in China. In China, most FS SFTS cases were reported all over the world. However, Japanese situation a little different from China's situation. Now I would like to present. This slide shows the transmission cycle of SFTSB. SFTSB was maintained in all stages of ticks. Major vector tick is Hemophysalis lung colonies. After tick bite, animals were infected with SFTSB and becomes viremia. And then tick were infected with SFTSB after tick bite, uh, blood sucking. And then, uh, many animals were infected with SFTSB, wild animal, livestock animal, human, cat and dog, and the animal were infected with SFTSB by tick bites. Without tick bites, human to human, animal to human transmission were also reported. These are major transmission cycle of SFTSB. This slide shows a comparison between SFTS and Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. I would like to say SFTS is very similar to Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Both virus belong to the same viral order, Bunya virales and different families. SFTS belongs to Phenibidae. However, CCHFB belongs to Nairobiridae. SFTSB distributed to China, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, and Taiwan. CCHFB distributed Africa, Asia, and Europe. SFTSB vector is hemophysitis species. 
for CCHFB, major tick is hieroma. The animal host is a many mammalian species. However, many mammalian did not show any clinical symptom. That is an uh, apparent infection. However, for SFTSB, cat cheated dog shows severe diseases in Japan. Transmission route is a tick bite, and the other transmission route is direct contact with body fluid from patient and diseased animals, sometimes animal bite. For CCHFB, major transmission route is tick bite, and minor transmission route is uh, direct contact with body fluid from patient and diseased animals. High risk group for SFTSB are farmer, veterinarian, healthcare workers, family of patients, owners of diseased animals. For CCHFB, high risk group are animal breeders, slaughterhouse officials, healthcare workers, and family of patients. Latent period of SLTSB is 6 to 40 days. However, for, C for CCHF, latent period is 2 to 5 days. Symptom is uh, similar between SFTS and Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Most important symptom is hemorrhage and death. Case fatality ratio of SFTS B is 27% in Japan. For CCHF, CFR is 5 to 40%. In Japan, CCHFB is a BSL-4 pathogen. However, SFTSB is a BSL-3 pathogen. I would like to say, SFTSB is similar to Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever and dangerous pathogen. This slide shows the clinical symptom in human patient. Major clinical symptom are fever, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, and malaise. If patient shows a neurological symptom and hemorrhage, so possibility of death become high. This slide shows distribution of SFTS case in human in Japan. Most SFTS cases were reported in western part of Japan, especially Miyazaki, Yamaguchi, and Hiroshima. In eastern part of Japan, there is not so many reports. However, recently in Chiba Prefecture, one case were reported. We think the distribution of SFTS is expanding in Japan. This slide shows seasonal change of SFTS cases in Japan. Major SFTS case Many SFTS cases were reported from April to October. The most cases were reported in May. In winter, the reported, reported cases not so many.
However, we have to say, even in winter time, the cases were reported in Japan. This slide shows the age of SFDS patients. As China's report, over 50 percent is a high risk. So, and the dead cases were also increasing. So we can say old person is a high risk group. In Japan, five years old child were inf was infected with SFTSB. So young person can be infected with SFTSB. So now I would like to show the SFTSB infection in ticks. This slide shows major tick species in Japan. This photo was prepared by Dr. Kuerta. So, major tick species in Japan are Hemophysalis flava, Long Colonies, and uh, Exodus Pasucatus, Ovatus, and Ambryoma tetsudinarium. So, and Major vector for SFTSB are hemophysalis long colonies and flower and then embryomas. This is our data. So this slide shows the detection of tick bone viruses from ticks in vegetation in Japan. We examined total 2,510 ticks for SFTSB and 5 per were pushed for SFTSB. 3 are hemophysalis flavor, 1 is a tetsudinarium, and the other is a hemophysalis kitaokai. So we can say these 3 ticks are vector for SFTSB. This slide shows the monthly change of tick species captured by flagging in Yamaguchi Prefecture. This is our data. In springtime, Hemophysalis long currents become active. However, Hemophysalis flava is a, become active in winter time. So these two ticks are major vector for SFTSB. So we can say in Yamaguchi Prefecture, all season is a risk for SFTSB transmission because vector ticks are active. Okay, in 2017, we have found SFTS cats. So now I would like to show the transmission to, of SFTSB to cats. So the first SFTS cats were dis was discovered by Dr. Okimi. This is a cat. The cat is mixed and two years old and female. The body weight is 3.7 kg and the cat was kept indoor and outdoor. In April 2017, she showed sudden anorexia and visited, visited to Dr. Okimi's veterinary hospital. She showed high fever dehydration. So 
So Dr. Okimi cannot identify the pathogen. So she asked me to identify the pathogen. This slide shows the blood test of the SHS cats. White blood cell and platelet were very low, and liver enzyme became high, and total bilirubin and CPK became high. So now we know these are. These are result of SFTSB. However, in 2017, nobody know cat become SFTSB. So Dr. Okimi asked me, the cat become possibility for SFTSB infection. I agree, and then I examined. This slide show our data. RT-PCR and ELISA were performed in our laboratory. RT-PCR shows the positive from the rectal swabs, and ELISA also shows the positive for anti-SFTSB IgM antibody. So we can uh, we diagnose this cat were infected with SFTSB. Cats infected with SFTSB were first report all over the world. This slide shows the clinical course and laboratory results. On day 12, appetite recovered, and on day 6, fever, uh, on day 7, fever were recovered. RT-PCR became positive on day 12. After day 13, we, can, we couldn't find any positive for, by RT-PCR. In addition, we succeeded in viral isolation. So, we confirmed this is the first cases of SFTSB in cats. This slide shows the phylogenetic relationship of SFTSB in cats. Red shows the cats isolate. So green is SFTSB detected in raccoons in this region. And uh, blue is a uh, human patient in this region. So we can say cat wa cat was this cat was infected same SFTSB around uh, detected in raccoon and human. So same virus were infected cats, raccoon, and humans in this region. In June 2017, we've discovered SFTS dogs. This dog is mixed and female and four years old. Third June 2017, this dog showed no appetite and high fever and leukopenia and thrombocytopenia and high C, C reactive protein. In addition, no prote protozoa were detected in blood smear. So, Dr. Oshima asked me, this dog is possibility for SFTS. 
and then I examine. This slide shows the blood test of the dog. On day 3, the dog showed high fever, low WBC, and platelet, and high liver enzyme, and CRP. On day 8, she showed blood this too. Finally, this dog recovered. And then we examined the antibody. So on day 3, high IgM and the IgM gradually decreased. And the IG, IgM were uh, IgM IgG increased. So we can say antibody show antibody shows this dog were infected with SFTSB. And the genetic uh, artificial shows also shows a positive from blood sample. SFTS dog lived in with the other two dogs. So we examine the other two dogs. So one is a positive for SFTSB infection, high antibody. The other is no infection. In addition, the owner also developed SFTS after this dog infection. So we found SFTSB transmission from dog to owners. This slide shows a monthly report of SFTS cats and dogs in Japan. So first cases were cat cases were reported in April 2017. And the first dog cases was reported June in June 2017. And then gradually SFTS cases were reported because veterinarian knows SFTS can infect to cats and dogs and cause severe disease. Blue is a cat. Orange is dog. So you can see easily, cat cases were more than dog cases. We can say cats were very sensitive to SFTSB more than dogs. Now, over 100 cases were reported, annually reported. And uh, in Japan, cat cases is more than human cases now. This slide shows the distribution of SFTSB patients and cats. Patient distribution were already shown. And then this is a cat SFTS cat distribution. So very similar to human. SFTS cat distribution is reported in the western part of Japan. This slide shows the comparison of SFTS cases by month. Left is a human patient. Every 2 October are high risk for SFTS infection in human. However, for cats, February to May is a high risk. And the other season is also SFTSB risk, infection risk is high. However, for human, winter time, in winter time, SFTSB infection risk is low. A little different. I don't know, but uh, 
uh, we have to know the reason why the difference were observed. This slide shows comparison of SFTS cases by age. For human, older person is a high risk group. However, for cats, younger cats are high risk. We don't know the reason. However, this is very interesting result. This slide shows summary sim clinical si summary of clinical symptoms in SFTS cats and dog. In SFTS cats, all cats show the low, low activity and anorexia. Half cats show vomiting. However, less cats show the diarrhea. John dice were reported all from all cats and the lethality is 60%. For dogs, low activity and anorexia were reported from all dogs. Half dogs show the vomiting and diarrhea. John dice is uh, not reported. For dog, number is not so many, however, lethality is 50%. For dog and cats, SFTS cause severe and lethal diseases. This slide shows a summary of blood test. For cats, high body temperature, low WBC, low blood rate, high total breathing, high liver enzyme, and CPK were report observed. For SFTS dog, high body temperature, low white blood cell, bright red, and high CRP, C reactive protein. This is a character, characteristic blood test result. This slide shows a pathological change in SFTS cats. In gross, as gross region, enteric hemorrhage, gastrointestinal ulcer, lung hemorrhage, jaundice were reported in many SFTS cats. This slide show our challenge experiment results. Cats were inoculated with SFTSB. Six cats were inoculated with SPL10, and four cats were dead. We could prove, prove cats were dead by SFTS infection and the lethality is around 70%. SFTSB causes lethal disease to cats. This, is, uh, this slide shows the change in cats after change. RNA, viral RNA increased, and the IgM antibody is uh, increased in acute phase and the recovery phase IgG was increased and white blood cell were decreased and platelet cell also decreased. This slide shows the pathological change in cats after death. Stomach ulcer was observed and severe hemorrhage was observed in intestine. Mesenteric lymph node was swelling and sometimes hemorrhage. Next, 
I would like to show transmission from cat to human. This slide shows one example of transmission from SFTS cat to veterinarian and nurse. On 15th August, the cat shows fever and jaundice. On 17th August, the cat was dead and then diagnosed as SFTS. On 17th August, veterinarian shows high fever and thrombocytopenia and hospitalized. Next day, nurse shows fever and malaise. Fortunately, she recovered on next day. On 31st August, veterinarian was diagnosed, diagnosed as SFTSB. And 6 September, she could be dis discharged. On 11th August, veterinarian and nurse were diagnosed as positive for antibody against SFTSB. This is a summary. Cat became SFTS and dead. Doctor and nurse treated the cats. And then doctor veterinarian shows a fever and nurse shows fever. Veterinarian shows severe diseases. So she was hospitalized. And then finally, nurse and the doctor show the antibody, anti SFTS antibody positive. So we can say nurse and nurse and doctor were infected with SFTS B from cats. This slide shows a summary of direct transmission from animal to human since 2017. 2000, uh, July 2017, dog, from dog to owner infection were observed. And then total 12 cases were confirmed as a transmission from animal to human. And the major target is owner and veterinarian. So SFTSB is a dangerous disease for veterinarian. So veterinarian can infect with SFTSB from diseased animals. So in conclusion, SFTS is tick-borne diseases and cause severe diseases in human and CFR is 20% in Japan. SFTSB can infect to many animals. SFTSB cause lethal disease in cats and dogs, cats, and CFR is around 60%. SFTS can transmit it from disease animal to human. Pet owner and veterinarian are at high risk group of SFTSB infection. Veterinarians should protect themselves by PPE, mask, glove, gown, goggles, and face shield. That's all. 
Thank you for your attention. APC's Plasma improves pet food and treat formulas. Important additives and ingredients, plus water, are added to the meat mixture to obtain a homogeneous raw emulsion. Plasma is added last. The raw emulsion is chilled to 12 to 14 degrees Celsius. The final mixture is then transferred to the shaper, which allows us to produce ropes in the targeted size and form. These ropes will then undergo a cooking process. Ropes produced with plasma show low adhesiveness to the surface, high cohesiveness, and high springiness. Pet foods containing plasma are easier to slice with lower crumbling, helping to reduce product losses in the production process. Plasma's superior functionality helps create higher quality pet foods and treats.